Hi Stampers, welcome back for my episode four of I Miss Your Face, an online card class. My name is Krista Thomas and I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Every other week during the coronavirus pandemic, I have been putting together these I Miss Your Face classes in the hopes that you are inspired to keep stamping and keep sending those cards. So in this fourth episode, we're going to be making this card as well as this one. So let me start with the first card and that's what this video is going to be all about. You'll need to access the next video to see the other card. This one is a triple fold out so you untie the ribbon and then you open it up and it has this tri-folded panel with the sentiment always and forever. And then on the inside, all of me loves all of you. To close the card, you simply thread the ribbon back beneath the floral image and then tie it in a knot or a bow again. And this ribbon is Mossy Meadow. You could also use with this designer paper and colors, you could use uh, a, an old olive. If you have some artichoke left from years ago, that would probably work as well. But let me show you what you need in order to make this card. And I am offering kits that are pre-cut. You'll get everything you need, including the ribbon, the little gold die cut, the gold pearls, the designer series paper, everything you need except the stamps. You'll have to do your own stamping and either fussy cutting of the floral images, um, but that's easy enough to do. You could always substitute with a different stamp set if you so choose. Okay, so the designer series paper is this pressed petals specialty paper. This is actually on the retiring list right now. It will be gone very soon if it hasn't sold out already. And you can see that you get four sheets of each piece. So I believe that is why it's called specialty because there isn't any gold embossing or you know silver or anything like that that the specialty papers usually have, but you're getting a lot of sheets. You're getting 24 sheets. This paper is absolutely gorgeous. And so that is where the designer series paper came from for this card. You'll also need an early espresso ink pad, a Parisian flourish embossing folder or something of your choosing, You'll need the Forever Blossoms Bundle. We're going to be using this image as well as the little flower, the double leaf, and some sentiments. And then the dies that are part of the Cherry Blossom die set. You're going to need this one. This one that looks like a whale tail. And the small flower. So those are the three dies that you'll need from this set. The gold swirl that you saw on the front of the card, right here, is from the Parisian dies that are on the retiring list. And it's this particular one right here. And so if that is something that you don't have, you might wanna grab it while well, you still can. It does come as a bundle with the Parisian Beauty stamp set. Again, that is retiring as well, so you can get this as a bundle on the retiring list. And then the sentiment that's on the, the fold out, always and forever, that is done on one of the stitched so sweetly dies. And it is, let me see if I can get those out, this one right here. So those are the four dies that you uh, would need as well as that swirl. All right, um, I did color 
the floral images with Stampin' Blend markers. I used Rococo Rose, light and dark, as well as Old Olive, light and dark. You could color with whatever uh, medium you choose. And then you need about 18 inches of ribbon. So let me get these things out of the way for now. And I'll show you what you would need as far as paper goes and the measurements. And this is all from a kit. So if you order kits from me, you would get all of this ready cut. All right, we're going to start with the card base that is crumb cake and it measures eight and a half by five and a half. Then we have a piece of very vanilla, five inches by 11. We have a piece of Mary Merlot for the front panel. This is five and a quarter by four inches. You have an inside panel that is very vanilla. Mm, let's see, which one is it? This one, five and a quarter by four inches. Then you'll need a scrap of vanilla. This is uh, five and a half by three and a half. If you're making your own kits from home, you might need a little bit more. Um, and the reason for that is that you'll need to cut out the die. But if you order kits from me, you get the die already cut out. So that piece of paper would be big enough. You're going to need a small piece of gold foil. This is roughly two inches by maybe three and a half. So a small piece so that you could cut out your swoosh, your swirl and swish. I was trying to combine that. <laughs> and then we have four pieces of designer series paper. The first one is four and three quarters by two and three quarters. The second one is four and three quarters by two and one quarter. The third is four and three quarters by one and one quarter. And then for the inside decoration, we have one that is five inches by three quarters of an inch. And then you'll need the 18 inches of ribbon and four gold pearls. And those are in my little baggie here. You would get a baggie with eight gold pearls because when you order kits from me, you get two kits for each of the two cards that I showed at the beginning of this video. So that's what you would get if you're getting a kit from me. And if you're cutting all of this yourself, you'll need to uh, go by those measurements. And all of those measurements are on the PDF that is available for free on my blog, uh, right above or below this video. So you'll be able to get that. So in order to make this card, we're going to make a couple of scores using the Simply Scored, scored Scoring Board. On our card base, we want to score the base at four and one quarter. This is just your standard card size, A2 card, and that gets folded in half like that. Then we have the five by 11 inch piece and we're going to score it in four different places. We're going to score at one and a half all the way down. And then we're scoring at three inches all the way down. And then five and a half all the way down and eight inches all the way down. Okay, now we're done with the scoreboard. And we can go ahead and start folding this. And I do recommend as you fold it to use a bone folder and get some nice creases. And you're just going to fold it accordion style, back and forth, back and forth. And when you rub down each score line, just rub through that one score line. So open it up and um, so that you're not continually rubbing the same paper over and over just so you don't get any marks or whatever. Okay, and then this one, we'll go back this way. So we'll get to that score. All right, so when you're done scoring, it should look like this, and it will open out like this. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside for the moment. 
And the next thing that we're going to do is run this Mary Merlot panel through the Parisian uh, flourish, Parisian flourish embossing folder. And I don't know if you guys ever noticed this line that goes across the bottom. That's my black lab barking in the background here. Um, he's chiming in as well. But I use that line to line up my paper so that it's always straight. And my dog is getting deaf, and so any little thing he hears, he muffs. It's not a full bark, it's a muff. So if you hear that, I apologize. Hopefully he won't be too distracting, but he's my shadow, so where I go, he goes. If I tried to lock him out, he would just cry the entire time. He's my baby. Okay, so there is that Mary Merlot piece all nicely embossed. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and glue this panel to the front of our card base. Just like that, getting it all nice and straight on there. And we're going to set that aside and bring back this tri-fold panel. We're gonna stretch that out, open it up, and we're going to add the designer series paper, the three pieces that go on this, just like this. So you start with the small wood grain over here at the left side. You skip a panel, this one glues here. You skip a panel, and this one glues here. So let's go ahead and do that. Doesn't matter what kind of glue that you use. I just happen to prefer liquid glue. So that's what I use. And I transfer my glue into an empty bottle that has this nice tip on it. Okay, we'll get that in there, like that, and then one more. And this paper, some of it is directional, so on this one you have words. You just want to make sure that they're not getting glued on upside down. And then this panel, the flowers are directional, the stems are. So you just want to make sure you get that on there properly. Okay. And then we're just going to fold this up like this. We're going to bring in the ribbon now. And we're going to just set that behind it, or this panel on top of it. And we want to bring this left end around it and over. And you want it just about as long as the other one. It's okay if it's a little bit shorter because when you tie the bow, you're bringing it all in so your ends will be even if you do that. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead. You could secure this on the back side with some tape, or you can just go ahead and add some glue, and we're going to glue this down to that front um, card. Okay, so it does not go exactly center. We want it a little bit more to the left of center. So something like that. Then just give it a good press and make sure that that is sticking. And if you're more comfortable taping that ribbon to the back side before you add glue, that's perfectly fine as well. Get that to nicely stick down. And we'll go ahead and set that aside while we do some stamping because the next thing is to stamp, color, and die cut some flowers. So I'm gonna set that off to the side. And the panel that I need now is my five and a half by three and a half. And we're going to get the stamps and the early espresso ink pad. And we're gonna ink up
and get that stamped on here just like that and then we need one flower I'll just put it down here and one set of leaves now if you want to decorate the inside you could use you could do some more but I'm going to just do these And, you know, while we have that ink pad handy, let's go ahead and stamp our sentiment on the label. If you were doing this at home without my kits, you would have to have a piece of paper big enough and do it here and then die cut that out. But I've already done that if you get the kits from me. Okay, always and forever. And then let's go ahead and stamp the inside panel too, just so that we have that done. And this little piece will go here. So I'm just going to lay that there so that I can see where I want to put this. And let's see if I can get this straight. Yay, I did it. Okay, so for now we'll go ahead and set this aside and the label aside because we're not quite ready for that. And we're going to do some coloring. So on these flowers and leaves, we're using Old Olive, Light and Dark, and Rococo Rose, Light and Dark, of the Stampin' Blend markers. These are alcohol-based, and so when you are going to color with these, you need to use a water-based ink to stamp with. That will help avoid any bleeding. And so just remember that. And I'm going to start with the Old Olive Light. We'll just get our leaves done really quick. There's a lot of shadowing that the artist did on this stamp. So it kind of tells you where you're going to need to shadow uh, when you come in with that darker color. And I don't feel like it needs a whole lot because you don't want them to get too dark. These markers are absolutely wonderful to color with. I'm gonna to go to the little end and get these little tiny leaves on these buds, as well as the stems. And then we'll do this. And if you don't have the Stampin' Blend markers, you could certainly use colored pencils or um, other markers whatever you like to color with. Okay, so we've got those stems in. Let's go ahead and go back to the big bristle and color these other leaves. Okay. And now I'm going to come in with the Old Olive Dark and I'm just going to do very little and just kind of some little flicks here and there to add a little bit of depth and shadowing. Like that. Okay, so I saw on the news this morning that things are starting to open up again after the coronavirus pandemic and I'm hoping that here in Oregon things will start to open up as well and so I don't know once I can start doing my local classes I don't know how much time that's going to leave me to keep doing the I miss your face classes but I'd love some feedback if you have enjoyed doing these at home uh, just leave me a little message I have sold out of kits every single um, week that I've done this, and I'm continually making more. So I think it's been popular, but once we get back to normal, is it going to be something that you're interested in? I would love to hear some feedback. So let me know. Now I am using the light Rococo Rose and just kind of filling in the flowers okay. 
Okay, slowly but surely we're getting there. You notice that I turn my paper a lot when I color. It just is how I do it. I feel like I just have more control of where my pen goes when I turn. Okay, now we're going down to this single flower. And once I get this one done, we're going to come in with the dark Rococo Rose and just do a little bit of shadowing. And I always figure the middle of a flower is where the, the darkness and shadows is. So I start there. And again, the artist has done a lot of the shadowing, so it's just a matter of um, going over it a little bit, giving it some of that darker color. And shadowing is just kind of quick work. Kind of going over the markings that the artist gave us. So whoever did this, they kind of make it easy for you. So as a demonstrator, um, I am looking forward to the new catalog. I got to see it online and uh, it's pretty awesome. The new in colors are gorgeous. So if you'd like a, a catalog mailed to you, just give me a little note and let me know. If you're local, I'll have them here for pickup when I have them, which will be towards the middle of this month, uh, or of May, I guess. It's still April as I am making this. Okay, so I think I am done. I like the way that looks. Let's put these markers aside. And I am ready for the Big Shot. And we're going to do some die cutting. Get my plates in here. See if I can get this in where you can see it. And we're going to start putting the dies where they go. Now I do have the magnetic plate, and so that holds the dies pretty good, but sometimes the dies kind of pull and shift. They pull to the magnets. So I like to use a little sticker dot, and these are made by Avery. They are easy peel color coding labels, fast and easy peeling removable. I get just over a thousand labels whoops, at a local store for just a couple bucks and they work great at the Big Shot. I just keep them at my Big Shot station. All right, this little guy, you gotta kind of figure out where it goes. Nope, I don't think that's it. There we go. Um, I hope I was in camera there while I was doing that. Okay, and then the little whale tail looking leaf. We're gonna go like that and tack that down. Now we put our clear plate over and we run it through. All right, and we pop those little guys out. And when I'm done using my dies in my craft room, I pop the dies into my magnetic bowl that I got at Harbor Freight. It is the handiest thing. And I highly recommend it if you have access to a Harbor Freight. I'm sure you can get them online as well. All right, so now we have our pieces here. And we want this one to go on the front and we're going to use Stampin' Dimensionals to pop it up because we want that ribbon to go behind it. 
like that. So we need to add these dimensionals in strategic spots so that we make sure we leave room. So I'm going to put a couple of dimensionals on these two flowers and then I'll probably put one at the base of this flower and maybe one on the leaf. So you don't have to overdo it. You just want it to stay put. So we're going to put one here and I think I'll get one of my mini dots and go like that. That's going to hold it well enough. And so let's get that ribbon back in where we're going to have it. And down we go. Okay, just like that. Now we're going to open this up and we're going to need this gold flourish as well as the flower and leaf and those go in this middle section but I kind of like to see where I want it to come out from and it's okay if it hangs over the edge it gives it that light airy look. You just want to make sure you don't put glue on that area. And then the flower will go at the tail end of it. And then the leaf I'm going to put up here because that way it will be hidden when that little panel comes over it. If you were to put the leaf like down here, it's going to show. So if you want to avoid that, it's entirely up to you. You would need it to be more under or over, and I feel like I like it better up here, so like that. Okay, so now we need to get some glue on that gold flourish. I'm gonna show you my little trick. I use a dotted tape runner. The one I like to get is Elmer's, and dotted it's not a solid strip and the refills look like this permanent dot runner refill you get two refills fills for about a dollar 99 at walmart i don't remember how much the original case is but when you pull it along your intricate die cuts the dots stick to the paper and then they don't stick or or if they do it doesn't matter um, to your silicone rubber mat just like that. And so you only get the dots where you want and you don't have the slime from the tape run, the normal tape runners. You don't get that slime in between. You know what I'm talking about? So that is my trick. And then you just lay this in. Again, remember not to get glue on this portion out here. And that sticks permanently and easily and you don't have any glue in the open areas. It's the easiest way that I have found. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this flower over the tail of that swish and I'm gonna add some glue to the leaves and add that there. Okay, and then that would go like that. All right, now let's add some pearls to the flowers on the front. And usually when I add pearls or um, sequins or accents, I like to add an odd number. But I tried that on this to just do a few of the flowers. And that one was just screaming for an embellishment. So I'm in this case, I'm breaking my rule. I think that it needs four. And I'm using my tweezers, but if you have the pick, take your pick tool, it also has a pointed tip on it. That works well also. So we'll add these pearls. See, this is how I first did it, and that one just, it looked wrong. So we're gonna add a pearl right there, just like that. Now it feels complete. Okay, one last thing that we need to add in here is our sentiment on the label, and we'll just go ahead and tuck that in here. Whatever you use in here, you just wanna make sure it's hidden 
when you close the card. So if we center that there from left to right, we should be good. Just like that. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and thread this ribbon back under, if I can. Come on, what is catching? I'm having trouble. <laughs> okay, there it goes, maybe. Like that. And we're gonna tie a knot. And when you put this uh, f gold flourish on, make sure that it's not going to be uh, where your ribbon is going to get tied or while you're tying it, you might catch it and tear it. So I may should have gone a little bit higher. And then pull those ribbons. And just like that. You can trim those tails off of your ribbon if you want to but just remember that it is going to get tied and untied and retied so a little bit of extra length is probably preferred now all we have to do is finish the inside we've already stamped it we're just going to glue this little three quarter inch wide strip of that designer paper down the left side leave a little border all the way and then we glue this in and oftentimes when I glue the inside of a card in I just do the top and the bottom because sometimes um, glue leaves a mark and so I just um, don't want it to show if it does so and there we have our first card all right, so I hope you enjoyed that, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we will be making this lovely lily pad card. And so I'll see you in the next video.